It's my favorite place to take people on a tour. You see, it's where Abraham Lincoln served. He was just a one-term congressman, sat in the back. I like to go to that spot and I like to stand where he stood. I like to do it at night when people aren't around. I like to look over and look at the clock. Because that's the same clock and same view that Abraham Lincoln saw. I've watched Lincoln serve in the greatest challenge to our Constitution, the Civil War. I watched him take peoples who were rivals and put them together. I watched at a time that he did not know if a nation could sustain itself, but he dreamt of a future and built a railroad across the nation. I want us to all take a moment one time that you are here. I want you to stand there. I want you to look. And I want you to think, if America could do it then, we can do it now one more time. You know, Abraham Lincoln gave his life in service to this country. One of his most important observations about America applies today, as much as it did 160 years ago. He said, we are striving to maintain the government and institutions of our fathers and to transmit them to our children and our children's children's forever. My fellow Americans, that is still our mission today. This moment calls for restoring trust within our country and with each other. In that spirit, I will work with anyone and everyone who shares our passion to deliver a better future for the nation. I hope you'll join me. As a Congress, we can only operate if we cooperate. My door will be open. I'd like you to come by. I want you to see, as you walk down the hall, a large portrait of Lincoln. I want you to go into that conference room. And I want you to see another portrait. My members know of this. It's of Washington crossing the Delaware. You all know the story. It happened on Christmas, 1776. There was no iPhone to take a picture. People wonder when it was painted. It wasn't painted by someone who was there. It was painted in 1850 and 1851. He was an immigrant who lived in America. Emanuel Lentz. You know why he painted it? Because he knew America was more than a country. America was an idea. He went home to Germany. And he wanted Germany to have a revolution based upon the values and freedoms that we defend every day. His talent was art. So he believed if he painted this painting, he could inspire his countrymen to rise up for the idea of freedom. Now, many historians will tell you he didn't get it correct. They'll tell you Washington crossed on a Durham boat, but he paints it with Washington in a rowboat. You see 13 people, but only 12 faces. You see Washington standing up in a rowboat in the middle of winter, wearing a ceremonial uniform with his hand on his chest. He looks so stoic. You would look at that man, you'd say, I follow him anywhere. You probably believe that he never lost a battle. But history would tell us at that moment, at that time, he had only lost. We had never won. You see, that was the night of our first victory as a nation 
when we surprise the Hessians. But when you look at that painting, don't look at Washington. I want you to look at who's in the boat. You see, the second rower in the beret, he's Scottish. The person directly across from him in the green, rowing in the exact same cadence, is an African American. You come down right to the middle in the red, the person who's rowing the strongest is a woman. And in the very back is a Native American. I don't know from a historic fact if they were in the boat that night, but to this young immigrant who had lived in America, that's who he believed would be in the boat. The second to last person is a farmer. He could be from Bakersfield, I'm not sure. His hand goes across his face. People will debate this part. But what I see is a hand of the 13th person nobody sees. You see, what I believe Emmanuel was saying is, here we are battling for the creation of the idea of freedom. That every individual is equal. Not a perfect nation, but striving to be a more perfect union. Having lost every battle against the greatest challenge with the strongest nation. Having lost them all, but willing to do it on our holiest of nights. With a hand reached out and asking if you would join us. That's as true today as it was then. If we let everybody in the boat, if we row in the same cadence together, there is no obstacle this body can overcome for this nation.